It's a beautiful feeling, a really beautiful feeling when you can be first at something in the art world. Of course, if you look at this painting right now, you just say, well, it's an abstract. If you look at this one, you would say that it too is an abstract. And so is this one. And this one. And that one. And this one. These. As you can see, I got really busy doing these really strange abstracts. And you're saying to yourself, well, how the hell are you first? First in what? How is it that you think you're first? Well, let me gather these up for a minute and I'll show you. I'm sure you've seen the commercials, right? This stuff. And I'm not endorsed by the company, so that's not a, you know, I'm not trying to do a commercial or something. But using that, I began to make prints like this. And my work literally changed. And it really did change. But it's not just about the paintings themselves. You have to look at the material. I had always wanted to do monoprints, which is something that kind of looks like this, right? This is a monoprint. And this was done with Flex Seal, by the way. So the idea is you make some sort of marks on paper or you make some sort of marks on a linoleum sheet, which is not my thing. And then you, you make prints. I hadn't thought of making prints using the actual medium. And I know I'm probably not the first person to ever draw with Flex Seal. So that's not my claim here. But what I am the first person to do is this, which I'm going to show you right now. I began to make molds. And these molds, at first, the idea was, I'm going to rubberize a substance. In other words, I would cut out things like cloth, toothpicks, pasta, all kinds of stuff, glue it to this board and then rubberize it. And in, in doing so, I could then use that same board to print onto this. Now what I didn't see or what I didn't think was going to happen is that I would start to play around with the rubber more and do something like this. Now my work, the work itself, is flexible. So as you can see, this is a rubber painting. And that, my friends, I am the first one to do it with that Flex Seal. I am the first person to make a rubber painting using that Flex Seal as a medium and as a substrate and as a printing plate. And as you can see, it's quite beautiful. And it's unique. It's unique to me. And this is the actual mold that I made for the rubber, which is also rubberized. So I can use this to press down on paper or wood or canvas and make more prints. And it's from these early experiments that, you know, I decided to start making art. Now, in the early days of the experiment, um, it didn't really work. As you can see, I tried gluing pasta to the rubber or to the substrate and the rubber just stuck to it and there was no way to get it off. And so this is kind of like the result of these effed up experiments. Here's another one. This one's even worse. That's another one that came out really bad. I kept the rubber because I could probably use it to do other things since it sticks to itself. But as you can see, there's pasta in there and there was no way to get this rubber mold off in the right way. There's no way to peel this off in the right way. So these were the early experiments and they were failures. Another thing that I did was I would take the rubber and spray it onto 
surfaces where I had already covered it. Now this works out really well. So this is actually something I have used to make prints. I believe one of these is that, yeah. I used this guy right here to literally start working on this one. But as you can see, I've incorporated my drawing into it. These are cut out. Um, and the more I played with the material, the more I liked how it interacted with paper, which led to some of the more advanced ones. So here, let me show you something real quick. I'll show you some more of the molds I made. So this is another rubber mold. This is another one that I made. This is an early one. Didn't come out that well, as you can see, because I had no way of figuring out how the rubber should not stick to surface. That problem got solved. So by the time, of course, I got to this guy, I figured out a way to make the rubber that I, you know, pour on top won't stick to this one so that I would wind up with two plates. But here's one that I wanted to show you one more time. So this one right here, all this is from the Flex Seal print from the actual plate, right? Which is this one. So you can see the, the figure. But this in and of itself, I actually love. It's very hard to photograph because it's black, but you can see that all the stuff's in there. And this is actually cardboard. These are plastics. That's, that's actual material, cloth, burlap, all kinds of stuff, basically sprayed with rubber, which then becomes an amazing printing plate. But I like how it looks all on its own. So these are some of the ones that I've done. Here's another one. Here's one where basically all of these are pieces of cardboard. And I'm quite happy with that one, just as it is. But it's not finished. There are other elements that I'm going to be adding to it. Here's one of the molds I made with my ladder and all that stuff. This is actually pasta. Believe it or not, that's pasta. And it's glued onto a plate. And then I sprayed it with the clear version of the Flex Seal. And this can be then used as a rubber stamp. And I've been doing that a lot. This one, which is even harder to photograph because it came out so shiny. This one was actually um, brushed on. And it, it's amazing how smooth they, it dries that when you, when you do it that way. So that's another technique. When I don't want that rough look, I don't use the spray. I use the actual, um, you know, from the can. So this was a, I think it was a sushi plate. And basically this is pasta and wire. So again, it's an amazing thing to be first at something because I thought someone else had done this and then I realized no one had ever done it before. So it's a pretty amazing thing when you create something in this day and age and then you find out that you're the only one doing it. So I'm pretty stoked. It's the beginning of something and I know that I'm going to keep doing art this way. So I'll show you some of the more advanced pieces now. Once I started to incorporate color and things of that nature, I realized that I could get away with doing like some very intricate designs. So here's an example of taking the one of the plates you saw with all the cardboard cutouts and see you get this sort of effect. And for this I used acrylics, which is another thing. You can mix the acrylic paint with the rubber and it works perfect. They seem made for each other. 
So it's very interesting, and I really love it, and I think it's transforming my art. As you can see, this is another plate or another print made from the same plate, as is this one. So this is the kind of stuff that I'm doing, and I'm really enjoying it. And it's something that I began doing around April, and I've been doing it ever since. So I think I've accumulated quite a bit of these drawings. I think this one actually, yeah, this one goes this way. So I've done quite a bit of them. And, oh, here's a cool one. This one was one of the first mono prints I made. This one's entirely made of Flex Seal. All the black stuff, all that stuff right there is Flex Seal. I used, where is it? Where's my little, yeah, it's this one. That's the one I used. This is the mold, basically, that I use. This is my flexible one. And I basically, this was one of the early experiments. And, you know, this is the kind of stuff I can make with it. And I'm just over the moon. So, here's another one. I'm going to show you my some of my favorite ones right now. If you don't mind me taking up all your time. This was one of the first early ones where I noticed that I could actually use this stuff to paint with. And I really like this piece. It's one of my favorites. And you can see the ladders, right? That came from one of these molds. I'm trying to remember which, oh yeah, this one. That actually came from this. So basically I stamped this and that's how I got those those very interesting lines. And if you can see, yeah, I'll see if I can get it closer. These lines, they're not, they're, they're rounded out. So it's very different than normal paint. It doesn't act like paint. It can, because here it takes on a rough texture. But if it's thick enough, it actually is rubber. And so on the rubber side, it tends to be very strange and it glues very well to itself. So these pieces right here, I glued them on. So that's one of my favorite pieces. This is another one I did that I'm very fond of. This one, um, everything here was done with Flex Seal. And this, all this section here, I did as a sort of finger painting. And these are etched in sort of like the way that I would normally do my, you know, my scratch board drawings, except that I've got the added bonus of being able to add more stuff to the outside. So that's also done completely with rubber. Okay. This one, again, completely done with rubber, all of it. Which brings me to two of my favorites. That guy. And this guy, which I am sure I'm going to use as an album cover for something. Whether it's a single or some sort of release, I know that I'm going to use it. Um, both of these are entirely done using rubber, liquid rubber. So it's pretty amazing what you can do with this stuff. Once again, I'm not endorsed by them in any way. This isn't something that someone paid me to do. Nothing like that. In fact, they're probably thinking, what the hell did you do? Because if you look on the site, I've done quite a few now. And I've been keeping it sort of secret because, well, I'll be honest. I was thinking if I'm going to be first, I want to come in with all guns blazing. So there you have it. I am the first person to use Flux Seal to create mono prints. And I am going to keep doing it. Thank you for watching. If you like what you're watching, I would strongly recommend that you like this video and subscribe. That does help me. Um, I'm going to be making prints of these. 
and I hope that you like them. Here's one where I injected color into the actual painting. Let's move it aside right here. And here's one. I love this one. It's one of my favorites. This particular piece is really odd. Um, this happened, these two were done in and around the time right before my mom went into the hospital and then she passed away. So this one's got that weird element of, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd like to think of it as a sort of premonition, but I'm not sure if that's just my imagination. But this piece was done 90% in rubber. This section right here is an actual old drawing of mine which I embedded into it and now it's just all one big thing. It's, it's, it's amazing how this material works and I'm really in love with it. So I think I'm going to be using this forever. I think I'm going to be known for it. <laughs> Sounds funny, but it's true. And this one that I'm going to show you, these two, if you know my work, you know that I use ladders a lot. So there they are, they're appearing. And I also love this one. The drawing itself dates back to about 1990. And again, the entire thing is almost entirely done with the rubber. Even these cutout sections that I glued on, they're also rubberized. So in the end, all of it has that rubberized texture. So this is the kind of stuff I'm doing right now. And I'm very excited about it. I think I may even take this one and make a shirt out of it. But you guys can let me know what you think about that. Um, let's see what else we got here. I just want to show you this one more time because it's so cool. <laughs> so this was the mold, which was then rubberized. And then this was then poured onto this. I have a very specific way of doing it now that works. And then when this dries, I pull this off and this is how I get this rubberized version, which is a unique thing all by itself. So as of right now, my art is flexible. Anyway, I hope you subscribe to the channel. I hope that you enjoyed watching this and I will be making more. And in the next coming weeks, I think things are going to heat up because, you know, I'm using this stuff to create pieces and art uh, for upcoming A-Box releases. So obviously, you're going to see more of this. So I hope you like it. And I hope you'll support the channel by subscribing and hitting that little bell. And please, please, please comment. Um, comments definitely help. Like I said, I'm not really turning into a YouTuber. That's not my goal here. But it would be nice to have your comments. Thank you for watching.